Hello and welcome back to another video. It is not a lot to read, I'm sorry. <laughs> so today I will be discussing my thoughts and opinions on Chainsaw Man as we have officially finished the series on the channel. It's been about a week or so, give or take, since I read the last chapters, so I had some time to go back and reread the series, and by reread I mean like heavily skim because ain't nobody got time to revisit all that pain so soon. <laughs> and I took some time to process everything that I read. So this video is kind of like a conclusive summary of all my thoughts about the series. So yeah, let's go. Okay, so starting off, oh wait, 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 hold on. I have a guest, I have a special guest. No, it's not my snake. Um, hold on, let me, let me get it. This is probably the best thing I've ever purchased, ever. Welcoming our special guest for this video, Pochita! <laughs> Y'all, look at him. <laughs> it's so cute. Look, you can even hold him. He has a little handle. A little, little chainsaw. <laughs> anyway, I I was y'all y'all I was so nervous because I thought he got lost in the mail because it took like two months for him to come and then like <laughs> the like notifications was like it got delivered and I was like where? <laughs> but he came safe and sound. I just think it got a little mixed up at the post office or whatever happened. So yes, I just I had to get. <sighs> this plushie, it's so huge, like the size of my head. But I feel like this is probably like life-size Pochita, no? Maybe a little bigger. I just, I felt, there was a tiny version. It was like super small, maybe like, not keychain size, maybe a little bit bigger. I was like, I could get that one. But I wanted to have it like on my bed and like, I don't know, it's just like funny to play with. Um, this is not the official one. There's an official one that, I don't know if it was actually out in Japan yet, but it has an actual pull string and when you pull it, it makes a chainsaw noise. I was like, what? So maybe one day if I can get my hands on that, cool. But if not, I will just live with the little like knockoff version. But it's pretty good quality, don't y'all think? Like, it's pretty solid. Anyway, Pochita will be joining us <laughs> in today's video because <laughs> it's just appropriate. Um, where do I, okay, maybe right here? All right, there we go. Put these in the back. <laughs> now we can get into the review. Also, I will be reading all of my thoughts uh, off my laptop because I had a lot of things to say and I am not about to memorize all the stuff that I wanted to say. Like, there's a lot. I have like six pages of notes. I know, I know y'all can't see it, but like, <laughs> it's a lot. All right, so these are kind of like written as questions to myself. So the first question was, did I enjoy Chainsaw Man? Why or why not? The obvious answer is yes. <laughs> yes, I did enjoy Chainsaw Man. I loved how unconventional the series was, but like unconventional in a good way. And I also really, really loved the characters. I thought the plot line, was amazing just from beginning to end even though it was kind of confusing at times. Granted it's not gonna get a spot on my favorites list but I would recommend it to others to read. Obviously with the pre-warning that you know there's a horror element and gore involved so if you're not interested in that probably shouldn't read Chainsaw Man. I'm sure that the manga will blow up even more after the anime has dropped so I'm looking, I'm looking at you, Mappa. Let us, get, give us the deets, let us know. <laughs> so if y'all look back at some of my Let's Reads, or maybe all of the Let's Reads for Chainsaw Man, y'all probably like, you enjoyed it? <laughs> and I think it's because my reaction doesn't really match my enjoyment, but I'll tell you why, in a little bit more detail, why I actually thoroughly enjoyed this series. So two major things I look for in a manga that I like is art and characters. I am a fan of highly detailed art and Chainsaw Man definitely had that. Plus I think I just like Fujimoto's overall art style. Also with the characters, I would like to say that Chainsaw Man probably had one of the best cast of characters that I've seen in a manga 
Um, in a little while, I would compare it next to Jujutsu Kaisen, which is one of my favorite mangas um, that is like on the newer side. I get very easily attached to characters, and if that bond is established from like early on, like when they're first introduced, then I know it's gonna be a good series. But yeah, if the art and the characters are mid, I get disinterested so fast, and y'all would have seen if I was disinterested in Chainsaw Man based off my Let's Reads. I would have dropped it if it was disinteresting, so there's that. Alright, what do I have next? So what were your favorite aspects of the series, and what were your least favorite aspects? Alright, this is going to be the core of the video because I had so many favorite parts of Chainsaw Man, and a handful of like least favorites, so I will be listing them kind of like one at a time and then kind of going into depth on certain ones because some of them are just self-explanatory. So for favorite aspects of Chainsaw Man, we have the artwork, candidness of the characters and the dialogue, balance in blending the real world with fantasy, realistic attitudes in the characters and the character's perception toward their world or environment, diversity in characters, comedic elements, subversion of the shonen storyline, breaking the fourth wall, expert plotting of character development and or character building through unconventional metaphors. These characters as follows. <laughs> Dinji, Power, Makima, Hayakawa, Pochita, Himeno, Kobeni, Violence, I know he has a name, that's just what I call him, Beam, Quan Chi, and her whole harem, Long, uh, Suhagi, Pinsy, I think that's how you say your name, and Cosmo, best girl. Oh, and then of course, the dogs. <laughs> Alright, and then for least favorite aspects, we have author unnecessarily relying on depictions of gross and or immoral acts throughout the plot line, vagueness on the structure of the devils slash fiends, whatever you call them, uh, vagueness behind chains on man's abilities, uh, constant death as a means to motivate characters, Dinji killing his dad, killing off Hayakawa, and cannibalism. Alright, so let's start off with the least favorites because there's less of those and let's just get them out, don't worry. So <clears throat> for the first one, for unnecessarily relying on depiction of gross things to uh, supplement the plotline, Fujimoto has this habit of kind of oversaturating violence and gore and elements of horror into his plot line to kind of like fill in gaps for things. I noticed this in Fire Punch, but obviously Fire Punch is a much different story, but things like murder, um, assault, rape, de de decapitation, things like that that are just unsightly and like <laughs> should not be shown very NSFW and not not in the sexual way. Um, he has a habit of, of inserting those things a lot to the point where it oversaturates the story so much that you almost are not phased by it anymore. And I kind of think that mentality is a little dangerous just because the audience becomes so normalized to stuff like that then it's like not a problem or it doesn't bother you later on. So. It might be beneficial for shock value in the beginning, right? Because you're like, whoa, like what's, what's going on? This is crazy. But if it happens every chapter or every couple of chapters, like back to back, you're kind of just expecting it to happen. I feel like it doesn't have the same impact. I am not saying he should take out all of the elements altogether because then it wouldn't really be like a horror genre related series. I just wish it just wouldn't be like so so much. I wish he wouldn't rely on it to like fill in gaps in storyline. I wish you would just replace it with, I don't know, background information. I don't know, little tidbits. I don't know, just something else. I don't know. As far as the vagueness aspect of the series, now technically Chainsaw Man, as we understand it, is just the end to like a part one and we are assuming that there is going to be a part two and if that is in fact the case that Fujimoto was planning to do a sequel of some sorts or continuation of the story that exists in the same world by all means keep the devil chainsaw man kind of ability structure vague because I would like to know more 
in the future. But if he is ending the plotline where it is and then starting something totally different in a totally different world and timeline and all that crap, I wish there was a little bit more clarity because I have a lot of questions about like why the devils are what they are and like their origins outside the fact that they like originate from hell, right? Also, I want to know more about how abilities come to be, right? Because obviously the devils are based out of things people fear, but like, why is that? Also, I would love to have more clarity on Chainsaw Man's ability specifically, obviously because it's the main focus of the series, but we really don't get that much explanation about his abilities aside from that conversation that Makima has with Kishibe, where she talks about like the ability for him to erase something from existence and subsequently from like everyone's like consciousness or whatever and she refers to like things like historic events or like um really tragic events of like disease or illness or whatever that like, Kishibe obviously like did not recognize so clearly like that is part of Chainsaw Man's ability but outside of that we really don't know how or why his abilities are that way or how he can perform them I don't know I just wish we had just had a little bit more explanation because that's like good character building and like good character development. I just, I just have questions and they don't have answers. <laughs> Last three things that not really in depth, but just kind of bothered me or just like, uh, um, Denji killing his dad. I just didn't feel like that was necessary. I feel like even if we didn't know how his dad died, the story would have just stayed, stayed the same. I don't know if Fujimoto included that because it gave, I guess, a little bit more background context to dingy growing up, I guess, and obviously another way for Makima to manipulate him, but I think it really didn't matter if we knew if, how his father died or not. I don't even think I was remotely concerned, but I don't know, it is what it is. I'm not saying it's necessarily bad and he should have taken it out. I just like didn't really see the purpose in it. I feel like we knew that dingy had a really fucked up childhood and like whether or not he killed his dad just seems like low-key irrelevant. I don't know. Killing off Hayakawa, I'm just, I'm just bitter about it. <laughs> I think it's just because I loved Hayakawa and I feel like there was so much buildup and all this like soft wholesome stuff with you know Hayakawa accepting Denji and Power as like his siblings or his family and then they just killed him at the hands of Denji. It just felt so like raw and I was just like no I want you to leave. <laughs> So I, I'm not saying it's bad or I just, I just hated it. I just hated it. And then lastly, oh my God, cannibalism. I would just like to say with my entire chest, fuck you Fujibodo. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like he always tries to go over and beyond with his endings and trying to pick the most like devious, immoral action possible. And I'm just like, why cannibalism of all things, bro? Like nothing else. I would have rather, I don't even, can't even think of something different. I just, I just wish he talked about them. <laughs> I feel like he's eating in all the things that bother me to my core. First it was incest with fire punch. Now it's cannibalism with chainsaw man. I was just like, no, I hate you, God. All right, moving into the favorite things. Ah, oh, yes, so many. So first off was artwork. Not gonna say a whole lot on that. I think we can clearly see that his artwork is great. I think I remember really early on when I first started, I remember comparing a lot of the scenes to some like Junji Ito stuff. Not necessarily in storyline, but just in detail. And to me, it's just like super impressive. And I'm a huge fan of how authors can be so meticulous at the scenes they create in their manga. Like, I don't know, it just makes the experience better. So props to Fujimoto for the art. Second thing is the candidness of the characters and the dialogue that is kind of like in junction with that. So I love this so much. I think Fujimoto is really good at making characters seem very realistic and very authentic. And it has to do with the fact that he purposely makes his characters flawed and have all of these human humanistic elements that you don't see in other characters in like mainstream mangas right 
Denji is like really dumb and naive, which is very unconventional for a main protagonist. And then even for secondary characters like Power and Hayakawa, usually like they're there to support the main protagonist. And I guess we could say like Power and Hayakawa did kind of support Denji, but like not really. They were kind of just doing their own thing. They just all happen to kind of like be in the same space. But Power is just like arrogant, right? And then like Hayakawa has all these moments of like sarcasm and just like exhaustion due to dealing with power in Denji, which I just found super relatable because if that was me in that situation, I would probably act the exact same way. I love that all the dialogue is very blunt, a lot of the characters are very direct, and Fujimoto in general doesn't really rely on big chunks of text or like really long explanations on stuff to get the audience to understand what's going on. If anything, he uses minimal dialogue or like no dialogue at all to express like the tone or the setting of that moment. And I think that honestly works in his favor so much more. Cause like, think about it. Every time Denji has like a big battle with some sort of like villain, he doesn't really say that much. I mean, and he pretty much gets to the point. He's like, shut up and die. Like, <laughs> and like, I love that. It's just very indicative of his character. I think it's just like very indicative of the whole series. Like, I don't know, everything just works. Like Fujimo did such a good job with connecting the storyline and the characters and the setting just like perfectly. So another one of my favorite things was like the comedy elements. And <laughs> I would like to say that Chainsaw Man is just as much a comedy manga as it is a horror manga and I think it's because Fujimoto's brand of comedy is playing off of awkward situations and like other people's frustrations or pain. I think a really good example of that is, oh sorry my snake just yawned. <laughs> I was like you good? A really good example of this of Fujimoto's comedy is through Kobeni's character. I think she is the physical manifestation of like every awkward situation, but also very like, but also very like painful situations happening to one person, like back to back to back. It's kind of um, the idea of accidental humor. So it's kind of like when people watch like home videos of people like falling off their roof or like busting through a trampoline. And you know that person is in pain, but it's funny because it just seems so ridiculous. And that's literally all of the humor that comes in this series. And especially with Kobeni's character, like every time she's in some situation, something terrible always happens to her or she's always in like a really desperate situation. And for some reason, it's so hilarious because you're like, Jesus Christ, this girl does not get a break. Like when they were finding the eternity devil and she was like trying to drink water out of a toilet bowl because she thought she was going to die. Or even like all the stuff that was happening with her car, right? Like she's like, I finally got something nice. And then like power runs dingy over with it. And then like, her car gets smashed and people like land on top of it or like even at the end when she got like forced into that weird like pseudo date with Chainsaw Man and she like was like playing DDR for her life like all this stuff is so funny because it's just so awkward but like simultaneously like very uncomfortable for her but like not for the audience. Some other points were you know the balance between real world and fantasy. Um, I think I'm just a fan of that setting in manga where the world that the characters are in is pretty much similar to our own with like one or two differences. Those differences being that there are devils and hybrid devil people and they have crazy abilities. I mean, it's just so interesting that everything was so normalized in their society. They have an entire like organization dedicated to just killing devils and people in Japan seem like they're just kind of okay with it. They're like, yeah, crazy ass creature things come out and kill people and like that's just it is what it is and i'm just like okay it kind of goes hand in hand with the realistic attitudes of like characters and especially related to their environments like everyone's reactions to whatever happened in this manga was just so realistic like there's a lot of times where he was just like i don't want to do this. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm exhausted or like, I just don't care. And that's such a realistic, I don't know, answer to that situation because I think the assumption is like main protagonist should be heroic and like wanting to go fight the villain and like 
or save others and like Denji was like fuck that like I'm just trying to like eat good food sleep and touch boobs like I don't want to like I don't want to do all this other stuff yeah they were just like if I'm not trying to do any extra work I'm just trying to do what I'm paid for and move on and I kind of love that attitude and I think it set a really good tone for the series so props to you Fujimoto. Diversity in characters that's pretty self-explanatory I feel like there were no boring characters throughout this entire series everyone was totally different all of them had a couple of screws loose and it just made the series really fun. Before I get into the subversion of the storyline and breaking the fourth wall, to this current moment, my favorite character is still Makima. I know y'all are probably like, but Makima kill power, but Makima blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna tell you right now, some of my favorite characters are the ones who are just like badass, crazy, just brilliant like I don't know and I just feel like Makima was all of those things plus she was gorgeous like I think I'm just a simp for Makima I think that's really what this is about I still love Makima she's still one of my favorite characters followed directly by power honestly if I had to pick a top three that I was like I love them I would die for them it would be Makima power and Quan Chi I love Denji and Hayakawa but like I would take those three women over any of the other characters in the series because I just love badass women and I just so with the subversion of the shonen storyline and kind of breaking the fourth wall so like for instance let's just take like naruto as an example right naruto is a very basic shonen plot line you have a main character who has some goal or ambition fights a main villain has friends along the way and by the end of the series like the main character come up accomplishes their goal and then it's done right you could say hypothetically that chainsaw man follows a similar structure but none of those regular tropey elements are included in Chainsaw Man. If anything, it's the opposite, right? We have a main character who is kind of fighting a main villain. I guess you could say like hypothetically it's the gun devil, but really it ends up being Makima. Also like Denji's goals are not righteous in any way. Like he's just like, I'm just trying to live a good life and like whatever I have to do to do it, like I'm gonna do it. It's very anti-hero when you think about it. And I feel like that is also mirrored in all of the other characters. Like all the other characters' goals are very kind of like self-serving, kind of selfish about them, whether it's like revenge or like trying to make some money or like, I don't know. It has nothing to do with like the greater world. Like their goals don't serve like a greater purpose. No one's just like hunting devils because they want to be a hero. And I feel like that is the subversion of the shonen plot line because Chainsaw Man is a shonen series. But it somehow doesn't feel like one at the same time. And then also with the whole like fourth wall, breaking the fourth wall thing. He did this a little bit in Fire Punch, but it was more apparent in Chainsaw Man. He likes to input or address aspects of the manga he's writing in the manga itself, which is like very meta. But there is this line or this part where they, I think it, they were talking about Chainsaw Man like on the news or in a newspaper or something. And they were like, showing Chainsaw Man as a hero and like they're making action figures of him and like blah 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 and they're like oh people are just like getting into giving into this like blind idea of a hero and like that's very much like what the audience is doing to Denji because I would like to think that if they put out a figure of Chainsaw Man right now I would buy it actually I did I bought an android like <laughs> but like the whole point is that Denji really isn't a hero he just does things that seem heroic and he's positioned as someone who's a hero like in their society right and even though we are reading about a fictional world they're almost fictionalizing the character in their world which is Chainsaw Man. Fujimo just likes to mind fuck his whole audience and sometimes I'm like oh my god like I hate you but I also love you because you're a genius. <laughs> so last major point this one's kind of long I'm sorry but this one just impacted me the most. So Fujimoto really went in on the unconventional metaphors to set up the theme of the story. I would say the first one that comes to mind that really impacted me was the utilize, utilizing the fable uh, the city mouse versus the country mouse. And we see that when um, Rize and Denji are having a conversation about it, also parallel to the conversation that Hayakawa and Angel Devil are having. And then that conversation kind of like leads into a later part with Makima, right? The whole 
conversation that they're having, right, alludes to the fact that Denji is clearly a city mouse and Rize is clearly like the country mouse, but like probably was previously a city mouse based on like her whole crazy history with her being child spy, whatever the fuck she was, right? And it's very indicative of their relationship because clearly like Rize was there for one reason and one reason only and that was to kill Denji. But then once she realized that like he was more human than she thought, she changed her whole plans, you know, caught feelings for him and was willing to kind of like change the directive of her mission uh, in order to protect him so they could like run off and be together, right? Which essentially is turning her into a country mouse. Obviously that reality did not happen because Makima killed Rize. And that leads me to my next point uh, that this fable is a huge hint towards Makima's character, specifically her ability, right? Because we find out later that she's the control devil, which obviously makes sense throughout the entire series of why she's so powerful and why people listen to her and like all this other shit. But anyway, I think the fable itself is giving us insight into her ability because one, she can control things that she deems lesser of herself and that includes things like mice who are just like little like street animals or whatever and that makes sense why she appeared out of a fucking mountain of rats. That she can like has ears and eyes everywhere sing through little animals like that. But it also conveys a bigger message about how she sees and perceives other people around her. The mice represent the people who surround Makima. That's how she views everyone around her. The fact that Makima is a control devil means that she can remove herself from that entire fable altogether. Cause you realize like the people having the conversation are trying to decide which mouse they would be. And Makima is saying like, I'm not a mouse at all. I'm just trying to decide like which one is easier to kill. And the fact that country mice think that they're safe because they're in the country but danger can still precede them and she is alluding to the fact that she is the danger. Like she's like, it doesn't matter if the mouse is in the city, in the country, in space, I can still kill them and en enjoy killing them. And like, that's like the sick fucked up part of it. I don't know, but that whole interaction, that whole metaphor was just crazy. It's also like very interesting way to develop Makima's character and really understand like how she thinks and how she perceives everyone else and that she really has like a god complex. <laughs> All right, so the next thing, the thing that kind of encapsulates the entire series is human life being compared to that of a dog. So this comes reference in a couple of different ways and I really love the way that Fujimoto did this. The first kind of instance of like being a dog is through Pochita, right? Okay. All right, and this is where my video went out of focus for the next five minutes and I didn't notice. So y'all are gonna get the ASMR audiobook experience, <laughs> I guess, for this next part. Sorry. As I was going to say, Pochita, despite being the chainsaw devil, takes the physical form of a dog. And I find it very clever and ironic that Denji, a boy who was already being treated like an animal with the mafia stripping him of his humanity by forcing him to work dangerous jobs and sacrifice literal parts of his own body for money in order to pay them back ends up fully merging with a devil that looks like a dog and now his character is fully established as a dog because now he has a literal dog inside of him crazy but the even deeper part comes from the fact that Denji desires to have a normal life or at least just experience normalcy, which he compares to experiencing basic humanity, AKA eating food, having a place to sleep, warmth, maybe a friend or two. And just when he thinks he's finally achieved that, he's tricked by Makima into a life that seems comfortable, but is in fact a mirror of his previous life just with the basic humanity part he wanted kind of sprinkled in. So for a human to be treated like a dog has really nothing to do with the simplicity of being an animal, but more so with being forcibly subservient. And it's not until the end of the story does Denji realize that he doesn't just want humanity, he wants happiness. And whether or not he got it through Makima or Rize or anyone else he trusted, normal life just sucks. You cannot be happy all the time and it's because there's stuff like death and pain and sadness. And I kind of interpreted Kobeni's conversation with Denji to be this very concept. And that's probably why Denji was so shook when she drops this truth bomb on him. I mean, 
Granted, the average person doesn't kill their best friend and then watch their other best friend die back to back, seemingly at the hand of Makima, but still. And it's very clear that Kobeni is aware of the hierarchy of power that exists in their world and how she has always played a weirdly subservient role everywhere that she is, whether it's in one of her jobs or with her family. And her conversation with Denji kind of brings him down to that reality, which I'm not going to say he wasn't already aware of, but I think he still had a little hope inside of him. But we know that he struggles with accepting reality anyway. All right, I'm done with my little analysis. I will say that Fujimoto was a genius with this piece, but... Sheesh. I'm telling you, Fujimoto is a depressed millennial. I mean, as am I, but you know, I'm not writing a manga about it. I'm just talking about it on the internet. <laughs> All right, so final thoughts on Fujimoto himself. If you saw my Fire Punch review, I'm gonna say something similar. And it's the fact that I hope he gets therapy or he's in therapy because a lot of the stuff that he writes about and draws cannot be good for one's mental health. <laughs> I'm glad there was no incest this time. He was riding a little close. There were some moments towards the end with Power and Denji, but he strayed away and I was very excited because I was going to be so angry, y'all. I did notice some improvements between Fire Punch and Chainsaw Man. Granted, yes, I know they're two different stories, but the fact that he wrote Fire Punch first and then Chainsaw Man came after that, I can see improvements both on his art, but also his writing style a little bit. It almost felt like Fire Punch was like a draft of a full series. And then Chainsaw Man was like the secondary improved draft upon that. It was nice to see those like similarities and differences, but overall like Chainsaw Man obviously had all those like better aspects and I just feel you know that's what manga artists are supposed to do every series that you come out with or each thing each project they work on is supposed to be like better than the last and I definitely saw that with Chainsaw Man. I look forward obviously to part two or whatever is coming post Chainsaw Man. Obviously I'm looking forward to part two of Chainsaw Man whatever that looks like however it manifests itself. I obviously will be very excited whenever he decides to drop that or whatever project he has next. I do think that Fujimoto is a very interesting author and artist and I appreciate how, I don't know, unapologetic he is in his series. Like he knows his series are weird. Like he knows that they're different. <laughs> and I can kind of feel from an audience perspective that like he doesn't really care what others think, I think like whatever interests him, he's gonna put it into his series or projects and like that's just that. And honestly, it's working for him. Once the anime comes out, I'm sure the series will blow up even more in popularity. I know it's already popular, especially in Japan, but you know, anime always affects the popularity of a manga, mainly because people wanna see the source material or maybe they wanna get ahead of the anime. But either way, I, that anime is well deserved because this series is really good despite how absolutely insane it was. I am a little scared for the anime onlys. By that I mean people who will probably just watch the anime only and not even interact with the manga. Because there's certain aspects of the manga that I think won't be adapted well into the anime just because it just it just hits different in manga. I don't know how to explain that. Maybe someone knows what I'm talking about. But I think there's anime only watchers are probably gonna get a little I don't know. I think they might miss the impact of certain things or have a little like oversight just because I don't think all everything will translate well to the anime. But regardless, I'm sure it's gonna be a great time a crazy show because this manga is absolutely crazy thanks so much for all the support on the series and i hope you all continue to support my other let's read series ones that i'm reading now and the ones upcoming in the future please share with me your thoughts on chainsaw man i really love engaging with y'all in the comments assuming a lot of y'all liked it but tell me why was there a favorite character that you have? Did you have a favorite arc? Were some of the things I said in this video kind of like resonating with you or maybe you think differently? Let me know because uh, I need I need friends to talk with about Chainsaw Man because none of my friends have read it. 
I know, I'm trying, I'm trying to get them to read it. It's just gonna take me a little bit. <laughs> Thanks for watching y'all. I hope you enjoyed this review of Chainsaw Man. And of course, keep snacking. Come fight.